Welcome to the SEI Podcast Series, a production of the Carnegie Mellon University Software Engineering Institute. The SEI is a federally funded research and development center sponsored by the U.S. Department of Defense. A transcript of today's podcast is posted on the SEI website at sei.cmu.edu slash podcasts. Hi, my name is Alan Householder. I'm the technical lead for threat ecosystem analysis in the SEI CERT division. Today, I'm joined by Art Mannion and Emily Sarniso. Art is the technical manager for the vulnerability analysis in this SEI CERT division, and Emily is an application developer also in the SEI CERT division. Today, we're here to talk about the VINCE vulnerability coordination platform. So this is the latest of, of several podcasts that our team has been recording on vulnerability coordination and reporting. Uh, we will also include links to the previously published podcasts in our transcript. Emily, Art, welcome. Thanks, Alan. Yep. Thanks, Alan. Great to be here. So let's start off by having you tell us a little bit about yourselves. Uh, what brought you to the SEI and what's, what do you do here on a daily basis? I came to the SEI from grad school. I was at the Pitt High School previously, and I am an SFS student. I was in the information security program at the iSchool at Pitt and did an internship with the CERT CC. Uh, upon graduating, I went directly um, to CERT in the network situational awareness team, where I was an application developer. I was working on network monitoring tools such as YAF and FixBuff and SuperMediator. I joined the vulnerability team about three years ago and have worked on a few things before helping out with the vulnerability coordination team. I am the lead primary developer of Vince and that's where I'm at today. And uh, hi, so this is Art and um, I'll, I've been at the SEI for 20 years now. Um, I am have been almost the entire time uh, hoping and wishing for better vulnerability handling tools. And finally, in the past couple of years, uh, Emily has come onto the team. And as she mentioned, um, she's the lead developer for the, for the Vince project. Uh, and it's been very exciting after these you know, 18 to 20 years to, to finally be building uh, some new tools for our work. Um, I am the technical manager of the vulnerability analysis team um, small team, we're 13 people, I think, um, and a core part of our work, not the only part, but a core part of it is coordinated vulnerability disclosure. Uh, we offer a service to the public uh, to take in reports about vulnerabilities. Um, we select which ones we think we can add value to and make a difference on, and we coordinate those. Uh, and that entire process we can, we'll talk about more during the podcast, but again, Vince is key here in being our new modern tool to help us with our coordination work. And I'm Alan Householder. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm the threat ecosystem analysis technical lead. Um, my background at CERT goes back almost as far as art. Uh, although I did leave for a few years there, uh, in 2007 to 2010 and then came back. So I've been back for about 10 years. Um, more recently, I've been working on uh, vulnerability discovery tools and fuzzing tools, and then uh, also doing some data analysis and threat analysis. Part of part of my role too here has been to sort of get to the uh, process of coordinated disclosure. And so I was a co-author uh, of the CERT guide to coordinated vulnerability disclosure that we put out a few years ago. There's another podcast on that. We'll have links in the in the description box for that. Um, but up till today, uh, that's pretty much what I've been working on for the last decade or so has been vulnerability related uh, discovery or coordination or, or things in that general realm. So I'd like to start by talking a little bit about vulnerability management and sort of the gener genesis for this work. So um, I realized, you know, up until just recently, our coordination work has mostly been uh, sort of a hub and spoke approach where uh, CERT has acted, CERT CC has acted as the uh, the hub of a coordination process between researchers and vendors, um, fielding those reports and managing that process. 
Um, and I understand that Vince has changed that quite a bit. So c- can we start uh, by talking a little bit about what has changed within with the process and what Vince is trying to address? Sure. So when I joined the team about three years ago, I sat down with all of the vulnerability coordinators and I had them break down how they currently did their work. And we started with just a blank whiteboard and all of the different tools and processes and workflows that they currently use in vulnerability coordination. And what I realized was that that in order for me to tackle any one part of that, we needed to kind of look at the whole process and decide if we can change the way that we do our work. And eventually the team agreed it was a slow start and we started replacing little pieces of the tools and then realized, you know what, let's just scrap it all and we're gonna move to something where it's more coordinated and collaborative and rather than us being the middleman for all of these processes. So that's the key to Vince, is that we're trying to bring everybody into a common room. We call it our case discussion, and we give everybody the information that we were given. So usually a reporter provides information to us about a vulnerability, and we provide that information to all of the different people that we think may be affected by that vulnerability. And we discuss that. We figure out what's the best way forward. We, we talk about disclosure plans. We talk about um, remediation plans. We talk about how we're going to disclose it to the public. And we hope that everybody gets involved with being the vendors and the reporter and the coordinators that we all communicate and collaboratively come up with a plan for disclosing the vulnerability and giving that information to the public. So that's the whole idea behind Vince. It is a uh, web-based software. People sign up for accounts. They log in and they have access to all the information that they need, all the information that we were given. And they provide us with more information so that we can provide that out to different vendors and um, to the public eventually. Yeah, thanks, Emily. Um, and you know, there's a there's a key piece here that Emily highlighted early on. Um, previously, using email, PGP encrypted email, to speak with many many different vendors uh, on a case, we were at the center of this hub and spoke model. And in many cases, the CERT coordination center was delaying, causing delays uh, and blocking communication. So one of the philosophies behind Vince is that uh, researchers, reporters of vulnerabilities and the vendors and the coordinators, ourselves in this case, are all uh, able to speak in a single channel, uh, the case chat that Emily described. Um, That's one of the ways we're trying to unblock uh, progress in the coordination process. And, this, is, this becomes very important when we talk about multi-vendor or multi-party coordinated disclosure. Um, there are many software vendors and development organizations today that have software vulnerability response and PCERT capabilities. If you find a vulnerability, you can go straight to them and coordinate with them. Uh, you don't need a third-party coordinator like the CERT CC here. But uh, we often find ourselves involved these days with cases where it's hard to reach a vendor Uh, or a vendor and a reporter might disagree, or in many cases when there are many vendors, multiple vendors involved. And that's really where Vince uh, shines. It's designed for this multi-party coordination uh, case, which is is much more complicated than filing a bug in a bug tracker between two different parties. So Art, I have a, a clarification to ask of you here. You mentioned reporters. I I think we all kind of understand what vendors are, but uh, I've heard reporters. Some folks talk about researchers, other documents talk about finders. Can you help uh, explain what those words mean? Are are they all the same thing or something different? Sure. Uh, And of course, um, we can point you to our our master's thesis on the topic, the CERT Guide to Coordinated Vulnerability Disclosure, uh, to read some of the details of the definitions. But Um, We, for many years here, have talked about the reporter, and very specifically, this is the person or organization who told us about the vulnerability. 
that person may be the finder. They might be, they might call themselves a researcher. Very commonly in the community, we hear the word researcher. Um, but reporter was just a more specific term. It implied less. It does not imply that this is the first person to find it, the only person to find it, that the person or organization consider themselves a researcher or not. So when the CERT CC says reporter and Vince says reporter, that is very literally the person or organization who reported the vulnerability. Um, you can pretty easily substitute the word researcher or finder if that helps you uh, think about it. Um, but that's our specific term. And I think the term coordinator is usually us uh, for in the Vince context, but is that, is there, are there other coordinators out there? Yes, thankfully there are. <laughs> um, so we, we do this operational coordination work. We offer this service, uh, but we are trying, it's been a long strategic uh, slog, but we are trying to put ourselves out of this operational coordination business really. Um, there are other coordinators in the world. There are other coordinators in the United States. Uh, many vendor PCER teams act as coordinators from time to time. So uh, we work closely with the Department of Homeland Security, CISA. They do coordination. We work with our counterparts in at least uh, Japan, Finland, the Netherlands. Um, so it's possible. A, a coordinator is a generic term uh, for the third party organization or role that helps coordinate the vulnerability response. And Alan mentioned vendor earlier, but just to kind of be careful about it. Um, vendor is code for software development organization. When we say vendor, we absolutely include, uh, for instance, open source maintainers. It's the producer of the software and it's, it's the organization or person who's involved in producing a fix. Again, vendor is the broad, broad term, but it absolutely includes uh, open source development. And it also increasingly includes traditional manufacturers too, as they in involve software into their system, into the products that they make, right? Uh, absolutely. We are finding, uh, it's, it's, not, it's not our phrase, but uh, I've heard a lot of, you know, the phrase I hear is, everyone is a vendor now. Almost any organization has a website, uh, possibly a mobile app. And to Alan's point, um, right, companies who have been around many, many years, decades, and are very well established in perhaps a physical manufacturing, a physical product manufacturing uh, ecosystem or sector, are now also software vendors because their physical product now has a computer attached to it, talks to the internet, talks to a cloud service, part of the internet of things world. Uh, so that's a whole new sort of spectrum, a whole new area uh, of, of relatively new software vendors coming to the coordinated disclosure discussion. Thanks. So I'd like to shift gears to talking actually about Vince at this point and uh, how does it work and what, what does it do? So uh, start with an easy question. Emily, where did the name Vince come from? Um, I get this question all the time. And I had previously developed a tool called Marty. Uh, and Marty was a malware analysis platform tool. And to stay within that naming scheme, which was just people's names, <laughs> we were trying to backronym a name for this new thing I was developing, which was the vulner vulnerability coordination platform. So, yeah, so there are very few names that actually start with V, <laughs> kind of are short enough to, uh, to backronym. So that's where Vince came from. It is the vulnerability information coordination environment. And we did a little bit of fuzzing there with the information uh, IN, which, so people always ask me, why didn't you call it Vice? And that would have been a fine name had I not had the limitations that I set upon myself <laughs> to find a name. Okay. So uh, Vince, Vince, this is where the fun starts really, uh, talking about how Vince works. And um, Vince is a web-based software. It is primarily developed in Python using uh, Django. It is hosted in AWS. We use cloud formation templates to bring up the, so the system. There's actually three different systems in Vince. Uh, one part is our public website, which is kv.cert.org, uh, where you can find all the information about Vince. We have a, another part of the software where is our collaboration piece, where vendors are able to log in and uh, communicate with us and reporters. And then there is our 
uh, tracking piece where um, the coordinators log in and do vulnerability coordination work. And they're kind of the people that are behind the scenes that are giving people access to cases, developing the cases, doing um, the required analysis on cases. And so it all starts with the, the coordination piece. When a reporter comes to us with a new report about a vulnerability, um, our vulnerability coordinators take that information. They might do a little research about that vulnerability, uh, confirm that it is in fact a vulnerability. And then they go out and they try to decide who is, in fact, who is affected by that vulnerability. And so um, part of that tool is our contact management software where it basically just keeps track of all of the different vendors that we coordinate with regularly. And we have um, a, a large amount, about 2,600, I think, vendors that we've communicated with in the past. And so we we use the VIN software to contact those vendors and ask them to come to the case discussion, which is the collaboration part of VINs. Uh, once the vendor gets access to the software, they can log in, they can, um, it's more like a message board. People can communicate, they look at the original report, the, the report that we received with all the details about the vulnerability and how they can reproduce it. And then they can identify or they can view the vulnerabilities that we've identified. They may or may not have a CVE ID at that point. And then they'll eventually get to look and critique our uh, vulnerability note, um, which is typically where we publish our vulnerability notes on kb.cert.org. So they can see drafts of um, that publication as you know we move forward. And they can communicate with the reporter as well. Oftentimes, the vendor has, has questions about how to reproduce uh, the problem or the bug in the software. And so having the reporter in that case discussion really takes us out of being the middleman because often before we had Vince, uh, the vendor would come back to us and say, you know, we need more information about this problem. And then we would have to forward that to the reporter. The reporter would come to back to us. We would send that to the vendor. Now everybody's in the same room and um, they can talk back and forth. They can share files. They can share information. And we, we've already had um, a couple cases that we've handled this way. And it's really been great. And it's moved things fa uh, along much faster than us having to be in the middle of that whole process. There's also an API um, that we've developed for vendors that don't want yet another account somewhere on the internet and they do have to have an account but then they don't have to log in and get the information they can just use our api to pull that information into their, into their own systems most times uh, p-certs for organizations have their own tracking systems uh, which is how they track bugs in their software and so this way they can pull that information right into their own tracking system and be able to to move that along internally. So I know at the beginning of this project, we had a lot of discussion about whether or not we needed to do custom development or if we could just use some off the shelf software, like a ticket tracking system uh, for this coordination system. And we eventually landed on, on needing to do custom development. And could you explain a little bit why that, that was the conclusion? So we originally did not want to create a custom ticketing platform. We looked at uh, a few different ticketing platforms such as Jira and the Hive. Uh, MISP and the Hive was a, a great tool and we really wanted to be able to use something like that. Um, the issue was that we have a very specific use case for the multi-party vulnerability coordination and being able to manage tickets per vendor was very difficult in, in those uh, other ticketing systems. Um, we need to have almost like a thread for each vendor and be able to manage the information that we receive 
per vendor and then be able to search on those kind of things and then publish on those kind of things. So it was, um, it was really just easier to create our own at that point. And we had a, there, fortunately, there are quite a few systems out there um, that we were able to kind of start from. We weren't starting from scratch. And we were able to then take our specific use cases and develop those into that. So Art, we've we talked a bit about the technical uh, underpinnings of what Vince is, but who would you say the intended audience is for Vince? Well, uh, clearly it's the audience um, that exists for this coordination work in the first place. So we, we've talked a little bit about some of the roles, but um, number one audience I would say is probably the vendor community. So these are, again, the folks who are developing software responsible for fixing it uh, or maintaining it. And, you know, it's fairly straightforward logic. Uh, if, if a vendor is not going to fix the software because they're not aware of the problem, we're not going to get any further with CVEs and patches and, and securing our systems. So it is imperative that vendors find out um, about these, these vulnerability reports. So certainly the vendor community, uh, also the reporter, or research or refiner community. Um, we are all kind of uh, depending on the beneficence of some researchers to when they find a security defect to report it to a vendor or to a coordinator. Um, security researchers have options. They don't have to report to a vendor or a coordinator. So those are our two probably largest external audiences in terms of getting the coordination work done. Uh, Emily mentioned vulnerability notes previously, and that is our public advisory about the vulnerability. So uh, ultimately, the reason we think this coordination work is valuable is that the end result is information that system owners and operators and users can, can then use to secure their systems, apply updates and patches, take mitigation steps, uh, assess their risk more appropriately. So wh while the, you know, the, the, end audience of vulnerability management is folks who administer and use and operate systems. Um, coordination parts that happen before the public disclosure for the most part uh, are really the vendor community and the researcher community or reporter community. All right, uh, so question for both of you. Uh, how long has Vince been in use uh, and what have we learned so far from having used it so far? Vince has been in production for over a month now. Uh, we have over 200 users at this point, um, internal and external, all over the world. We have learned quite a few things uh, in this first month. Uh, we've tweaked a lot of things. Um, it's hard to develop a system. This is me personally talking. It's hard to develop a system where um, people have been using the old system for over 20 years. So they were very, uh, acclimated. Say? very, yes, very acclimated to using um, a particular system and, and the workflows that came along with that particular system. And so now we've really changed this whole uh, workflow for all of the people that are doing the vulnerability coordination work. So, you know, we've really kind of tweaked it as we've went. We realized that, you know, Things um, need to evolve as we're moving forward with this new system. And so I have about 250 deer tickets waiting for me. <laughs> and, you know, we plan to keep evolving it uh, as we move forward. But we've had great vendor feedback so far. Um, people are excited about using it. They find it, it's definitely, I think, easier to use than PGP email, <laughs> which I refuse to use. So uh, having that, to not deal with that is one perk of Vince. Um, they can get their information faster. We've had a couple of case discussions where the reporter talked directly to a vendor and was able to kind of communicate back and forth about a particular problem. Um, and I think one of the vendors was from, you know, halfway across the world. So, you know, it was interesting to see all of the different uh, people using Vince so far. Uh, we've had a couple people use our API and are providing feedback for us. Um, so that's always great. And it's great as a developer, you know, to get instant adoption, I guess, in this case, where 
we have, you know, a lot of people using the system right off the bat. Um, we have been playing with Vince for most of this year. Uh, we presented it at RSA in February uh, to a group of vendors that meet with us at our RSA vendor meeting every year. And so we were able to demo the system and provide test accounts for particular vendors. So we have gotten a lot of feedback from them over the past few months. Uh, we also did some usability training earlier this year uh, with vendors and reporters for our system. So that was a huge help in getting initial feedback for the Vint system. Um, additionally, we, we talked about Vince at a, a PSER technical exchange in March and again got more people enlisted and uh, got feedback from them and so far the feedback has been great o originally people were hesitant to kind of come to a communal discussion especially with the reporter being in the room and as they started to um, look at Vince and realize that it does actually speed things up quite a bit. And most reporters just really want what is what is best for everyone, which is they want the vulnerability fixed um, in a timely fa fashion. So knowing that the intentions of the reporter are typically good, uh, everyone seems willing to sign up and uh, you know move forward in this new way of vulnerability coordination. So Art, I know you're very often out at conferences and meetings and flying all over the planet talking to people about vulnerability coordination, how awesome CERT CC is and how good we are at it and how much we love doing this stuff. Um, have you, how much, how much pushback did you get when you were having those conversations either earlier on and you know, do, do, those do those concerns still seem to be present or have we alleviated those concerns by the system we've delivered or what, what's your impression of sort of the... Uh, the vendor community's opinion of the utility of something like this? Well, um, I think to some extent that remains to be seen. Um, Emily mentioned around 200 users, and I'm, I'm making a pretty rough estimate here, but my guess is that's 10% or so of our sort of current, current contact list. Um, and, but what, what's really interesting, this is a, we, 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 we've hit this point a couple of times, but I, I think it really bears uh, repeating. Right, this 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 philosophy of assuming that people have good intentions, right? The researchers and the reporters are trying to um, get things fixed by coming to the CERT coordination center or going to the vendor, and the vendors are planning to fix things and do want to fix things, right? We have looked at this problem from being in the middle. We've seen sort of all two or three sides of it for for decades now, um, and what's really nice about Vince is the technology and the design of Vince actually implement. Some of this philosophy. So we have heard uh, stories of reporters who are uncomfortable uh, being known to vendors. We have heard vendors who are uncomfortable knowing that a reporter of the vulnerability is sort of in the room, in the chat space at the same time. Um, but so far we've chosen to proceed um, with creating this room and this space. Um, early to tell, you know, sort of no final results in yet. Um, but we plan to continue this direction and we expect there will be disagreements from time to time and we'll address those issues as they come up. Um, but there's an, an even higher strategy or an even broader strategy here of we're trying to get this coordination and the disclosure process to be sort of a normal, mundane, boring thing. Um, software has vulnerabilities. People are going to find the vulnerabilities. We believe the least cost to everyone, and that includes sort of the greater good and social cost is that there's a report that the vendors find out, that there's a bit of private embargo time followed by public disclosure and fixes. It's not gonna, hap it's not gonna stop happening, it's not gonna go away. So can we make this process as smooth as possible? Uh, and again, Vince is designed and implemented to do that. And that's the really uh, great thing to me that we get our philosophy you know, turned into code in the Vince platform. That all sounds interesting uh, and exciting actually. Uh <laughs> So if I'm a software vendor or a cybersecurity researcher, where do I start? Uh, how do I use Vince? How do I access the platform? What do I need? 
So you can just simply go to our website. That's been our URL for 20 plus years, kv.cert.org. And there is now a events tab at the top and you can create an account there. Uh, once you create an account, you will be asked to enable two-factor authentication. Uh, and then um, if you are part of our kind of contact management world, um, we already know you and you know us maybe, we, uh, you're automatically uh, accepted into the Vince world. If you are new to us, we will look at your account and probably accept it within a, in a few hours. Um, but you can always submit a vulnerability report to us uh, with or without a Vince account. We prefer you have a Vince account before you submit a vulnerability to us. That way we can invite you to that case discussion uh, when, we, when we have it. And it's much easier to do that if you create an account first. Um, but once you create that account, we will accept you into Vince and you will be able to communicate with us about any reports you make or if you are part of a vendor organization um, and you are affected by a vulnerability that was reported to us, we will be able to discuss it with you there. As Emily's said in some detail, yes, you know, we have events is in production. You can sign up for an account now. A um, couple of things I'd like to add. Very soft rollout for us. Uh, we are not yet requiring anyone to use Vents in order to receive reports from us. Um, but as time goes on, we will be steering away from our, our previous transport mechanism, which is again, PGP email. Um, so we would definitely encourage our, our vendor community to sign up for Vince, uh, check it out, see how it's going to work for you. Um, consider the API if you would prefer to have your system talk to our system, as opposed to uh, depending on human analysts to learn everyone's uh, individual new uh, web-based platforms. Um, and to clarify something, uh, we accept anonymous reports, and that is still true with events. Um, a reporter has a slightly better experience, potentially, if they have an account with us, we can add them to a case, they can see what's going on without having to ask us questions uh, through some other channel. Um, but we, we, we continue to support and have, have no plans to discontinue support um, for receiving anonymous reports. Um, and to the extent that we can guarantee anonymity, um, we're happy to do so. And even if a researcher or a reporter just wants to basically drop the report on our lap and leave, uh, they can still do that too without even creating a Vince account, right? They, they, can, they don't have to be anonymous. They can just submit it to us. We still know who they are, but it doesn't require a creation of an account, right? We, yeah. we appreciate reports in any form. Um, we prefer higher quality reports, but we, re we appreciate any reports and we'll do our best to handle all of them and make a decision on each one. Emily, you mentioned uh, two-factor authentication. Are there special tokens one needs, or is that just uh, app-based, or how, sh how does one get the, two the second factor? You can use your favorite uh, two-factor app, like Google Authenticator, Duo, LastPass. Uh, there's a few of them out there. You can use one of those, or you can use just SMS-based um, two-factor authentication, where we'll send you a code to a phone number, and you use that code to log in. Okay. So Art, over the last few years, we've continued to refine our work in vulnerability coordination. So what's next for us? We've, uh, we've discussed some of this throughout the podcast so far. Um, but I, at a strategic level, I'm interested really in this normalization, this making coordination and vulnerability reporting boring every day and common. Um, we don't, as a society and as a country, have the energy and the bandwidth to treat every disclosure like an emergency. Um, we are counting 20,000 plus public vulnerability disclosures per year. Uh, that sort of scale has to be automated. That's also a low watermark, by the way, the number is probably much higher. So um, we need to reduce friction uh, for this entire process from the finding of the report to the last moment that the last vulnerable system is hatched, if that ever happens. Uh, and make it kind of boring and not exciting and not dramatic and routine and as efficient as possible. And again, limiting risk and harm and cost to, to all of the parties uh, involved. Um, the API Emily mentioned might be a specific way to help do that within Vince and across other um, such platforms. Uh, the CBD guide we've mentioned earlier is part of our attempt to 
uh, influence process and standard development, uh, standard development uh, globally to make this, these processes normal and boring. Um, in, in, a, in an operational sense, we want to be, put ourselves out of business. We want more coordinators. We want coordinators closer to their respective sectors. Um, we want all kinds of vendors, open source, IoT, traditional compute, traditional IT, um, physical products and goods vendors who are now also software and computer vendors, all of them to have vulnerability response and vulnerability disclosure programs. They can handle these reports themselves, um, ideally someday without the need for uh, a single global third party uh, coordinator like us. So Emily or Art, are there any anything else that I didn't ask you about today that uh, we should cover before we close? I think we've covered all the major points and covered a lot of ground. Um, thanks for interviewing us, Alan. We encourage our vendor and reporter communities to sign up for events account to check it out. We are truly testing in production. We greatly appreciate your feedback. We will eventually be moving to events as our primary way to share vulnerability information. So particularly for our vendor community, we recommend signing up for an account. Check out how Vince is working, test out the API. We do plan to open source Vince at some point, once it's a bit further along in the development process. Um, I really can't thank Emily enough for her development activities in getting Vince uh, up and out the door and into production. Uh, and I'm sure the few remaining months of, of uh, additional feature requests and bug fixes that we have. <laughs> Okay, so if folks want to use Vince, uh, they can go to kb.cert.org and click on the Vince button up at the top. Uh, and Emily and Art, thank you for being here today to talk about this work. Thank you, Alan. Thank you. And to our listeners, uh, thanks for joining us today. We'll include links in our transcript to all resources mentioned in the podcast. And this podcast should be available at the SEI website at sei.cmu.edu slash podcasts and anywhere else that you get your podcast, including iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, and SoundCloud. Thanks. Thanks for joining us. This episode is available where you download podcasts, including SoundCloud, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts. It is also available on the SEI website at sei.cmu.edu slash podcasts and the SEI's YouTube channel. This copyrighted work is made available through the Software Engineering Institute, a federally funded research and development center sponsored by the U.S. Department of Defense. For more information about the SEI and this work, please visit www.sei.cmu.edu. As always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email us at info at sei.cmu.edu. Thank you.